I'm extraordinarily glad to be back in England. We got an immense amount of information in the United States about the condition of England, the spirit of England, and Scotland, I may add, and about the way in which London and other cities had taken the bombing. We therefore felt that we knew something about it in New York and Washington. But you can't realize it till you've been in it. And everything that the American correspondents have said is obviously true when you get here. The way in which people perfectly calmly are going about their work, houses being blown down, bombs falling, nobody getting excited or moving faster. It is one of the most impressive things I've ever experienced. And certainly the American press have done their best to convey that to the United States. In some ways, perhaps, they conveyed it too much. Uh, Great Britain, most of the photographs deal with bombed houses and so on. Uh, and there was a little too much of it. But uh, it is a very impressive sight. And there's not the slightest doubt that it has made an indelible impression on the American public. <coughs> The British haven't always been very popular abroad. Um, I won't go into the reasons for that. But uh, three things have impressed America. In July, when the French had collapsed, a large number of Americans wondered how it was possible for Great Britain to avoid following in the footsteps of France. She'd lost her munitions, she'd lost her equipment in France, she'd straggled back in that wonderful um, Dunkirk evacuation to an almost empty England. Hitler was supposed to have much the biggest air force in the world, and a great many Americans, including their military and naval authorities, felt that uh, Great Britain would go this autumn. The first uh, thing which gave them pause was the RAF. They suddenly realized, largely as the work of American air attaches who'd been over here and came back and went to America and laughed at the idea that there was any question of Great Britain being defeated. They said, we've worked with the RAF, we've seen them at work, and those boys have got the Germans beaten. They've beaten them in better machines and better pilots. And that began, began to change the picture. Then the, th the picture of Great Britain alone in Europe, defying the lightning, defying Hitler, unafraid, <coughs> stopping the march of the monster. And finally, the picture of uh, Great Britain especially the Londoner, Cockney, taking it, and taking it cheerfully and determined not to give in. It made an indelible impression on, on the American mind, and um, 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 don't let anybody think that it hasn't had its impression. The effect of it so far has been mainly that America today is determined to give Britain everything it can to help it to go on defending itself. Now, that isn't wholly altruistic, because America has realized that the existence of the British fleet, based on Britain, and therefore preventing the access of uh, Hitler and Mussolini to the Atlantic with their fleets, is an essential ingredient in American security. But if there is one thing about which the United States is solid today, and that is that they must do everything they possibly can to supply Great Britain with munitions and other equipment, 